welcome to the rate expression lecture under the head of uh, radical chain polymerization. Now, this is in continuation with the previous uh, discussion. Now, if you recall that in the previous lecture we were discussing about uh, the different polymerization sequences, uh, initiation, propagation and termination and uh, we gave uh, a lot of uh, deliberations related to the importance of these initiation, propagation and termination steps. And uh, we developed a couple of equations uh, which we will utilize uh, in this uh, particular lecture, especially related to the, the propagation and termination. And we especially in combination or disproportionation uh, equations will be more useful for the discussion in this particular lecture. Now, uh, let us have a brief look that what are the topics which we are going to cover in this uh, particular lecture. Um, we will discuss about uh, the rate expression concept. You know that I discussed about the rate constants in the previous lecture. Uh, then we will discuss that how we can represent these rate expressions. Then we will discuss about the cage efficiency and uh, we will determination of RP. Now, uh, let us have a look about the rate expression. Uh, the mechanism of radical chain polymerization is usually explained in uh, various sections which we discussed previously and uh, uh, we have expressed several equations uh, like if you recall equation number 1 to 4 during the termination and propagation step. So, out of these steps, the chain propagation can be said as the polymerization determining step. Uh, that is a step number 2. Now, as a large number of uh, monomers uh, or monomer unit, they get converted into the high molecular weight polymer in this particular stage. If you recall that we discussed uh, this thing like uh, uh, P1 plus P1, they com combine to form the P2 and then P2 plus P1, they get to get P3 and so and so on like, like this. So, that the molecular weight, weight may have uh, the sequential approaches. Now, to get uh, kinetic expression of uh, for the polymerization rate, it must be assumed that the Kp and Kt, they are independent uh, of the size of uh, radical. Uh, this thing uh, must be treated as uh, purely an assumption. Now, this assumption is usually similar to the assumptions of uh, equal reactivity uh, that was employed in the derivation of step polymerization and, uh, kinetics which we discussed uh, previously. Now, initiation and uh, propagation step, they involve the disappearance of uh, monomer units, uh, uh, which we already discussed and uh, in the next slide we are going to discuss. Now, if uh, Ri and Rp, they are the rate of initiation and propagation respectively, uh, this one Ri and uh, Rp, then the rate of uh, disappearance of a monomer we can express like uh, this particular equation, the rate of uh, disappearance of monomer, you can represent like R i plus R p. Now, if in continuation with the previous discussion, we may represent like equation number 5. Now, uh, during the polymerization, the number of monomers used in initiation is uh, very less and when compared with the chain propagation. So, uh, in that case, uh, we can neglect uh, uh, Ri. So, by this way, we can put forward the things like, like Ri is less than less than Rp and then uh, we can write this equation like Rp. Let us represent like equation number 6. Now, the rate of a propagation, the rate of propagation we can express this one if you recall that uh, our rate of propagation was there. This is the propagation rate constant and this one like this. So, R p that is the rate of propagation, it is equal to 
this is this becomes the equation number 7. Now, here m is the monomer concentration and m dot is the total concentration of all chain radicals. So, this is uh, uh, the way through which uh, you can tentatively um, represent uh, the rate constant. Now, in this uh, case, uh, um, now, this uh, uh, equation cannot be used directly because uh, measurement of uh, free radical uh, concentration is uh, extremely difficult or as it is available in a very less quantity. Therefore, uh, m uh, radical or m dot needs to be replaced um, in this uh, equation number uh, 7. Now, to achieve this uh, another assumption is to be taken that initially the radical concentration increases and almost instantly, instantly it gains a constant value. So, it can be said, said that uh, polymerization occurs at a steady state. The radical concentration uh, from initiation to termination stage uh, can be considered as constant. Now, let us have a look about uh, this particular ap approach. So, um, the rate of initiation let us assume that it is equal to the rate of termination. So, R i is equal to R t or 2 k t. This may be represented as equation number 8 or m dot is equal to Now, putting uh, equation, uh, we may put equation 9 in equation number 8. So, we get R p is equal to K p this is equation number 10th. Now, uh, from this equation, uh, we can conclude that uh, our rate of propagation reaction is proportional to rate of initiation. So, if uh, uh, initiation rate is uh, doubled, then propagation rate will only be increased with the factor of. So, this is again uh, a very good uh, uh, phenomena. Now, the steady state assumptions uh, um, which we are using is can be practically valid for the cases where the reactive intermediates or radical concentration is very low. Now, in case of uh, radical chain polymerization, this particular assumption is practically valid as initiator radicals are always available at a very low concentration. Now, the steady state uh, assumption uh, uh, for several polymerization reaction has also been experimentally validated with the various researchers. So, uh, after a period of time, a standard polymerization reaches at a steady state which can be at most one minute or sometimes it is less than one minute. Now, there is no definition as to whether termination is by coupling or disproportionation reaction as both obey the same type of kinetics in the particular reaction uh, form. Now, sometimes the use of factor 2 in the termination rate equation, it follows that uh, the convention widely accepted for the reaction which usually kill uh, uh, the radicals in pair 
it is uh, due to the fact that uh, radical being produced in pairs. Uh, this convention is also preferred by IUPAC system while using the polymer literature. It should be noted that uh, equation of uh, 2 was always uh, uh, or sometimes not always been adopted. Now, dependence of uh, polymerization rate on square root which we discussed in the previous uh, slide, uh, square root of uh, the initiation rate has an uh, important conclusion. Now, the reason behind uh, for uh, such uh, slower increase uh, in propagation reaction, it can usually be explained uh, in various ways. Uh, when initiator radicals, uh, they are produced in a higher amount, it may give rise to the concentration of free radicals inside the reaction system. Hence, uh, entropy of the system decreases, uh, which results in decrease in free energy barrier and that attributed to the Gibbs free energy. Now, this decrement lead to uh, the rise of bimolecular reaction between the free radicals. Hence, uh, most of the free radical uh, get terminated within a short span of time. Now, let us have a look about uh, the cage uh, uh, efficiency. Now, the first assumption while deriving the rate of a propagation that, uh, uh, that is uh, which we developed in this uh, the equation which uh, if you see that this equation in, uh, number 10 which can rearranged into the different form that is Rp Ri upon or this is the 1 upon 2 kt rate of initiation or this is 1 upon 2 kt this is the equation number 11. Now, if you see um, the equation number 10, we assume that uh, the rate constant of uh, propagation and rate constant of uh, termination are independent of the size of the radical. Now, uh, because we have taken the assumption and to be uh, things to make the things more realistic in nature, uh, we need to overcome these assumptions. So, to overcome these assumptions, we introduced a new term that is called the cage factor. Now, this uh, cage factor depends upon the change on several parameters, uh, including the radical size, shape, sometimes solvent viscosity, etc., and uh, the cage efficiency sometimes referred as F is defined as the ratio of rate constant for cage combination that is referred as Kc uh, to, the sum, uh, to the sum of rate constant of all cage processes. So, this Kc is usually the sum of rate constants for all cage processes. Now, uh, the term cage is uh, thought of uh, uh, as the nearest environment the first sphere of the initiator molecule and the nascent radical pair. See, uh, whenever we talk about uh, uh, the initiator molecule, it may be surrounded by various uh, uh, things like uh, um, uh, nascent radical pair, sometimes it may be surrounded by the polymer chain if it is uh, survived in due course of time. So, the cage efficiency or efficiency of initiation sometimes it is referred as efficiency of initiation is always less than unity due to the cage effect. Now, F uh, um, this can be introduced in the rate expression, uh, we can look the things like this. Now, if uh, we uh, denote F as the cage efficiency and uh, recall that it is defined as the ratio of uh, the rate constant for cage recombination. Kc and the sum of the rate constant for all cage proportions. So, we are having this is the initiator molecule. Now, you see here
Now, this is the reaction of initiation radicals with one another. So, the rate constant for the chain initiation can be written as F k d. This is the rate constant for chain initiation. So, R i 2 F k d like this, this is equation number 12. Now, if uh, we combine uh, the equation 11 and equation 12 and rearranging, then we may have R p is equal to k p that is the rate constant under the propagation head upon 2 k t half. This is the rate constant of uh, termination then m 2 f k d half. Now, if uh, k is equal to f k d k p square upon k t to half, then r p is equal to k m i half. Now, k is called the overall rate constant of polymerization. Now, the value of k is uh, taken differently from different uh, literature. It can also be multiplied with uh, 2 uh, with if uh, r i is equal to r t will take as r i is equal to f k d i, then k is equal to 2 f k d upon k t. So, this is the generalized equation which you can see that is represents the rate constant. Now, this is the, the, the pictorial diagram which uh, we were discussing about. Now, here this is uh, um, the initiator and you see that the solvent molecules they are surrounded and you see that uh, this gauge efficiency is represented by this one. Now, R represents the free radicals and RR is the combination and I is the initiator. So, this is uh, the, the pictorial diagram to represent the things. Um, we have already discussed this uh, uh, the rate constant for the uh, propagation steps and there are various experimental methods available as on date to determine the polymerization behavior. Uh, the methods used to characterize the radical polymerization are also applicable for ionic polymerization. Some techniques they require sampling at a particular interval of time, such samples need to be deliberately quenched to stop the, the reaction to ev evaluate the rate of reaction and other chemical properties and sometimes uh, to evaluate the, the byproducts whatever develop in due course of time. However, there are some new and advanced tools uh, available for uh, which uh, helps in continuously monitoring the experiment and obtaining the better results. Most of these characterization techniques uh, they are usually same for analyzing the step growth polymerization. Um, we uh, for the ease of uh, the listener and ease of uh, you some of these methods uh, which we are going to uh, apply in the determination of this rate uh, constant for propagation step we are going to discuss here. Uh, one thing is that the physical separation and isolation usually in this category because it is very important to know that efficacy of uh, the, the polymerization process. So, in this case the samples usually taken out from the polymerization reaction system for a particular interval of time and then the samples are usually isolated 
followed by drying, weighing, etc. This is the usual protocol and uh, the isolation is usually performed through the precipitation technique which requires uh, addition of uh, some non-solvents. Now this particular technique is very useful for chain polymerization reaction containing monomer and high molecular weight polymers. Uh, now, however, the aliquots of uh, step polymerization sample, it contains various low molecular products um, like as an intermediate or a co-product or a byproduct, etc., whose solubility difference is nearly similar. Hence, this techniques, uh, these techniques cannot be applied for such type of a system. Moreover, this uh, process is time consuming and require a great care but is found to be the cost effective than other methods applicable as on date or available as on date. Another thing is uh, attributed to the chemical and spectroscopic analysis. Uh, for example, vinyl monomer, the titration of the unreacted double bond molecule using the bromine, this can be useful to determine the rate of propagation in a particular interval of time. Spectroscopically, um, an increase in absorption signals suggests that uh, the formation of polymer. So, various devices uh, like um, infrared, uh, ultraviolet, NMR among other they are widely used for this purpose. Now, due to advantages of including the continuous monitoring and better efficiency, these devices or these tools are widely applicable in such type of polymerization characterization. Now, certain substance uh, they play a very vital role in inhibition and uh, retardation of a polymerization process. So, these substances if they are present in the reaction system suppresses the polymerization reaction by neutralizing the radical species or by decreasing the reactivity of uh, the propagating radicals too low to undergo propagation. So, as per the effectiveness of substance, it can be divided into two parts. One is inhibitors, another one is, is the retarders. So, let us have a brief look about these two um, subsets. Inhibitors, they stop uh, each radical and halt the propagation step until the radicals are being consumed in uh, due course of time. The one best example of this particular approach is benzoquinone. There are certain retarders, they are less reactive compounds and which partially stops the reaction. The best example, they are the nitrobenzene. So, impurities, uh, sometimes the impurities, various impurities may present in the monomer or sometimes solvent, they can act as a suppressor. So, uh, these uh, compounds are having some commercial uses, therefore they are having more and more importance. So, reaction inhibitors are added to monomer to uh, avoid the premature thermal polymerization during the transportation sometimes storage, sometimes in the delivery concepts, etc. So, either these inhibitors, they are removed before the polymerization or additional initiator is usually provided to compensate this effect, so that they can compensate, they can uh, even suppress the, the involvement of these inhibitors in the reaction mass. Now, the inhibition reaction uh, with the inhibitors uh, or retarders, they can be written like this uh, Mn plus Z that is uh, um, this inhibition in, um, rate constant Mn plus Z dot that is the Z radical and then it creates the things. Now, the new radical, you see that uh, the new radicals they are formed MnZ radical or Z radical, they does not have uh, sufficient energy to propagate the reaction. Hence, uh, uh, they do not reinitiate the polymerization and uh, finally it terminates without generating substantial Z in due course of time. Therefore, uh, you can write this uh, inhibition kinetics uh, with the help of uh, this equation um, dm uh, radical. Uh, dt over dt um, is equal to ri plus 2 kt m uh, dot square minus kt z m 
that is we have already assumed. Now, as R p is equal to k p m dot m that is combining these equation may lead to this uh, particular equation that is R p to k t upon k p is uh, uh, square m square plus R p z k z uh, upon uh, k p m minus r i is equal to 0. Now, here this k z and k p is considered to the inhibition constant and sometimes it is denoted by small z. Now, you can easily found that the second term uh, this one second term in this uh, rate expression um, is adding the factor of uh, rate of uh, inhibition. Now, if uh, this term is negligible as compared to the first one this one. Uh, then this equation will again shrink to normal rate expression as we discussed uh, priorly. Now, for uh, inhibition uh, if uh, this inhibition is uh, stronger than uh, this uh, first term uh, that is a bimolecular termination can be considered as uh, negligible. So, this is uh, foremost thing which we need to consider while designing such kind of a kinetics. So, we can write uh, the equation like this. Um, that R p z k z uh, upon k p m minus r i is equal to 0 and then R p z k z upon k p m r i is equal to 0. So, R p is uh, the rate expression for the inhibition polymerization can be represented as R p is equal to r i k p m upon z k z is equal to minus t m over d t. Now, if uh, z naught is the amount of uh, initial inhibitor concentration then the concentration of inhibitor z at any time t can be given as z is equal to z naught minus r i uh, t upon y. Now, this indicates the number of radicals terminated and combining both the equation if we combine both the equation then we may have uh, this equation into the, the picture after integrating in terms of uh, concentration of m. Now, uh, sometimes uh, if we plot uh, this 1 upon d l n m upon d t versus t. So, um, we get a linear slope you see linear slope hence the value of y and z you can easily determine from the slope of the curve. Now, uh, uh, George Odeon the uh, he uh, he calculated several inhibition constants at 50 degree Celsius or sometimes he stated the things if you see this particular table represents his uh, uh, findings and uh, the detail study you can have in uh, um, uh, the literature which we have enlisted especially this particular uh, uh, book is extremely important. So, uh, in this particular chapter we have discussed about the rate kinetics and rate of a reaction uh, of a different steps whether it is initiation, propagation and termination and if you wish to have further study in this particular thing we have already uh, enlisted uh, uh, 4 or 5 uh, different references for the future reading. By this way we are summing up uh, this particular lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you.